And you were even just talking about the prefrontal cortex. That's one of the reasons that I think people that are trying to recover from addiction need at least one person to help them, uh, even if it's a wife or a husband or a good friend or a coach or a therapist, someone with a healthy brain. Because if they've had a, even a moderate addiction, there's they've proven this now is it disables and erodes the functioning of the prefrontal cortex. And that's the that's our free will right there. That's our the difference between right and wrong, like critical thinking. If that's heavily eroded and disabled, well, our free will is heavily disabled as well. So we just keep making these decisions that we don't want to because our brain is like high, the midbrain survival part is hijacked. Go, 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 drink or use drugs or both. Prefrontal cortex is not there fully to put on the brakes. So working with a coach or somebody, even if it's like a friend or an AA sponsor, if it's what works for that person, but to have another healthy, a healthy brain when your brain is not healthy, a healthy nervous system, and that person can help you. Because when I was doing it on my own, I could never have lasting success because it was all up to me and my brain just wasn't up for that job, you know? So too big of a job. Absolutely. It's way too big of a job. Mm-hmm. And the nervous system um, isn't in, in safety because it's not trusting that sequencing part of our brain because I couldn't sequence, you know, I mean, walking around San Francisco with no shoes and mm-hmm. multiple hospital tags, like there was no sequencing going mm-hmm. on there. You know, all it was, was go get more booze and figure it out. Survival, right? survival mode. Absolutely. And, and that's what we know. And even the slightest bits of trauma can do that for us. So I just love everything that you just shared and it's so important. And that's where, um, systems like the, the, the woman who was teaching that be love and that compassion can come in. You know, some, one of the first things that I do in that first month of working with someone is support them to untangle this so that they can really see and feel like, oh my gosh, this wasn't my fault. Mm -hmm. Like at one point I knew that I wanted to do it different, but I had no access to sequencing skills. Mm -hmm. And then like from there, you can bring in this like, oh, gosh, I forgive myself. And so often, you know, in especially in longer term, you know, there, there's a lot of space between the substance use and, and where the person is now. There's what's keeping them so stuck is like this, this forgiveness piece. Mm-hmm. And it's like all the trauma is just, you know, in there. Mm-hmm. And when we start to allow that to be um, just... I don't, we don't ever have to even know what it is. Like someone will just get the chills and I'm like, awesome. Mm-hmm. We just discharge something, right? Like, let's move it around. Let's drink some water. Duh, duh, duh. Like the body will naturally let go of these things. And then that's when the catharsis or the tears or the anger can, can come out. And then all of a sudden it's like, wow, I, I think I have a little more compassion for myself and others. This is fascinating stuff. Self-compassion is huge and people that have addictions currently or that are, you know, recently off. And like you were saying, even long-term, a lot of the time they can hold on to that. They don't forgive themselves. They don't forgive other people. Oh, I didn't forgive myself. And I sure didn't forgive some people in my life that were supposed to be the closest people and the safest people. And then just stab me in the back time after time. But then over the years, like you're saying, you know, it start, I start to work on that stuff more. It starts to, you know, have less of an impact on my life. I think from talking about the past on this podcast so much, uh, kind of going back in the past and, and sharing the lessons that I've learned that, that my co-host has learned, I feel like that has been a really awesome way to like healthily process those past negative experiences, those past, uh, challenges that I had, whether it was something that I got myself into most of the time or something that just (laughs) life just happened. And my mom was saying that when she was younger, she was going through a lot of mental health stuff and her, her parents both died when she was in her twenties, I believe really young. Mm -hmm. And she got into one of the things along with meditation was primal scream therapy, I believe she called it. And so one of the things when I quit substances, there was a phase I went through where I was a, a robot. 
I didn't have good emotions or bad emotions. I was like a cold kind of machine robot. And it was like this protection because I was hurt so much. I didn't want to get hurt anymore. I was too emotional. Now that I was off drugs and alcohol, screw that. No one's ever going to screw me over again. Not a girl, not a guy, nobody, not an Mm. employer. So I just, but I had chronic pain and I had like other issues too. And I was not happy and I was prone to anger and irritability. I was like the one emotion. And so just over the years and just being more emotional, I had to force myself. I had to like start moving my body around, listening to music, getting back into playing music. If I'm tired, if I'm stressed, shake my body and go, ah, oh. Uh, my yes. girlfriend and, da- and our daughter, we're all, they're always laughing at me because I just start singing the most horrible but funny stuff. Or I'm just like moving my body around a lot. And, yes. and, uh, and that helps me like just shake everything out, you know. Otherwise, it yes. builds and builds and you get tense and it's no fun. I'll shut up. No, it's no fun at all. And I, everything you're saying is like what I practice every day. <laughs> and last night I got stuck in something. It was like all over my right hip. And I was like, ah, oh. <laughs> you know, it's just like, let it out. And then I, and I like to be witness too. So I called one of my mentors and I'm like, I need some support. You know, like there's something in here. And, um, oh, it's just it's something that you said I want to just touch on too. And, what I'm seeing, and of course, this isn't backed up by any science yet, but, um, is that that often happens in the someone who's masculine and claims that masculine energy, mm-hmm. that 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 robotic, like, I just have to do exactly what I have to do and da, 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 and I don't want to feel too much this or too much that. And they just get into this process of recovery that's rare, very robotic. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then they just often um, struggle with um, what they'll call erectile dysfunction. And I'm like, no, <laughs> it's just like, you're, you're, you're not allowing yourself to express to emote to sing weird songs and to like be in your divine masculine energy. Mm-hmm. Um, and I work with a lot of men. And you know, it's just so fun to give them that back when they're like, Oh, my gosh, there's nothing wrong with me. I was just scared. So it's another form of a a dorsal kind of collapse in, uh, in polyvagal words of going into that, like freeze. Mm -hmm. Like I have to do this exactly like it is, or I will drink or do drugs again. And that's somewhere conditioned into their, into their brain or through their experiences. And like, no Mm -hmm. one will ever hurt me again. Mm -hmm. Oh my gosh. And so the heart is just closed down, but in order to thrive, we want to emote. We're meant to emote, right? We're I meant to, <laughs> we're meant, it. we're animals. <laughs> and so we got to do that. Um, and it, and it takes safety. Mm-hmm. And I love that your mom has these tools because <laughs> screaming is such a great tool. Really you know, is. like it is, I go down the canyons here in Topanga and just like, ah! <laughs> and it just feels so good. Mm-hmm. And something moves and we don't have to know what it was. It's just like, oh, I just feel better. 